Good afternoon, everybody. This is Tammy Zimmel, and I'm the Vice President of Marketing at Estimating Edge. Um, before I go into anything, I had some messages that the dial-in number wasn't working, so I sent it in the questions um, box for you, and somebody had said that if you just keep trying, for whatever reason, we're going to busy signal, or people are going to busy signal. So um, hold on, and I can help everybody after I'm done kind of doing the intro. Um, so thank you for joining the webinar today. This topic is really exciting to us because it's a brand new feature and uh, we have our best on to show us how it works today. Joe Pettit, our senior training support specialist, will be showing you today how this works. Um, for those that have attended before, just a reminder that all attendees will be on mute. Feel free to ask any questions during the webinar since we will answer all of them at the end. And just to answer questions, type in your question at a box below. And then a couple housekeeping items. Um, within the, a couple of hours, I'll send you the recording and I'll post the recorded webinar online on our website. Um, the three question exit survey, guys, this really helps us shape those webinars for you. And I, we definitely appreciate all your comments and feedback. And then lastly, our next month's webinar is on Edge on Site, which is our new mobile app that tracks production against the estimate. Some of our customers call it field quantity claiming, and it's great to track production progress and even cost. For example, a customer said that they love it since they were able to get real-time insight into cash flow. So that webinar will be held Wednesday, April 15th at 1 p.m. So let's get started. Joe, I'm going to pass it off to you. Okay, there we go. Okay. And let me know, see if you can, can you see my screen there, Tammy? I can see your screen, Joe. Great, all right. Well, thank you, Tammy. So what are common conditions? Common conditions are multiple conditions that are used in one area of your building, then repeated multiple times. As a result, this speeds up the takeoff. For example, let's say you're a drywall contractor estimating an apartment building or a hotel. Room A may occur many times throughout the building and have multiple conditions that are part of that room. Or maybe you are a contractor waterproofing balconies that require multiple conditions. The same balcony occurs many times. Common conditions allow us to measure these examples one time, then replicate them throughout the building. You might think of it as a replicate feature, but instead of for one condition, it's for multiple conditions. To do this, we've created another page in the bid we call the common conditions page. All the common conditions in any one section of the bid will appear on these common conditions pages. They are reference pages that do not add to the estimate until counted or measured on a standard page. In my example, I'm using an interior project. Here are the images I've begun to import. I'm going to select some of these images for standard pages and another as a common conditions page. Let's see how I do that. I'll go ahead and click the select button on these two images and click my manage selected images. Here I have three options. I can create a standard page, I can create a common conditions page, or I can create a page and a common conditions page. For this example, I'll just create a standard page. And since I know that the scale of these images are 1 8 inch, I'll go ahead and add that in right now. Now, when I click Save, over here on the right-hand margin, the two pages appear that I selected, just like they normally would in a typical bid that you do in the Edge. Now I'm going to create a common conditions page. To do that, I first deselect the two pages that I made. I come down here to this enlarged view and I select that. 
I click my Manage Selected Images. And this time, I say I would like to create a Common Conditions page. Now, this is an enlarged view image. So instead of it being 1 8 inch scale, like my floor plan is, this one is a 3 8 inch scale. So I'll enter that in here and click Save. You'll notice when I clicked Save, nothing else appeared over on the right-hand side. The common conditions pages will not appear over here in the right-hand margin, but they will be added into my job when I click my Continue button. So I'll go ahead and do that now. And just as you're used to doing in the Edge, the Edge goes ahead and creates your job file and brings you to the scenarios breadcrumb. I move forward and I'm on my sections breadcrumb. Everything so far looks just the same as usual. It will change a little bit when I move to my pages breadcrumb. When I move forward to my pages here, I see the two standard pages that I created for my bid. But up here on the left-hand side, it looks a little different. I have something that says Section 1 Pages, and I have two icons over here. The default mode, the default icon, is the Pages icon, where I can see the pages that I created. But if I click this little CC icon here, now it says Section 1 CC Pages. And down here, it shows that common conditions page that I created instead of the standard pages. You'll also notice this little blue CC square over here, which is the symbol that will be the symbol for the common conditions, as well as the symbol for the particular conditions associated with this room type. All right, I'm ready to go ahead and add my conditions. And to do that, I move forward just like I would on any other bid. I hit my plus like I would on any other bid. And I come down here and select the groups and conditions that I would like to be part of this estimate. In this case, I'll select these three. And then I'll come down here and select a column for this one. So I click Add to Page, and all four of these conditions appear on my common conditions page. Over here, you see that CC symbol. And here you can see the description or the title for my common conditions page. Now, normally, here, let me go ahead and move this column up first. <clears throat> normally, at this point, I would open up the condition properties and make whatever changes I need to for this particular project. But for now, we'll just say that all these conditions are already set the way we need them to go, and we're ready to measure them. To do that, I click my Forward button one more time, and this takes me out to my Common Conditions enlarged view of my room. Let me zoom in a little bit on that. I'll click one of these conditions and I'll start measuring. Now I realize that this room probably would have two or three different wall types where I'm counting it all as one wall type. I'm doing that just for simplicity to make it a little bit easier in the demonstration. There I've measured everything I need for this partition. Now we'll say that this part is a furred wall. And we'll go ahead and add that column in here. And last but not least, I'll go ahead and add my ceiling in here. And there we go. Now I've got my common condition completely measured. I'd like to show you something about this at this point. Remember I said that the common conditions are reference pages. What exactly did I mean by that? Well, if we come back here, here I see all of the quantities from the common conditions page 
I see all of the quantities for the various conditions that are part of that room. However, if I come back to my pages breadcrumb and I shift back to the pages view and I move forward on this page, I see nothing. If I go out to the pricing screen, the labor screen, or the recap screen, I see nothing. That's because that common conditions page is a reference page. It does not get incorporated into my project until I measure it on a standard page. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm on this first page. I move forward and I go out to my takeoff screen. And when I do that, this is what I see. Notice my menu here. Notice at the upper portion right here of the screen. Notice what's going to happen in a moment. Notice another thing. Notice I've got a pages tree and a common conditions tree. The tree that is over on the right-hand side will be the active tree while I'm on the screen. To go ahead and select that common condition, I first come to the conditions option here and I single click on that. When I do that, this appears on the screen. I can then hit this drop down and select my common condition and there it is sitting on my plan. Remember I measured this common condition in a 3 8 inch scale. This is a 1 8 inch scale drawing and the edge has reformatted this particular room to the 1 8 inch plan that I'm putting it on. Now, it's not exactly in the direction that I would like it to be, so we want to change that. Now to do that, first I'll get rid of this extra copy I've got here by clicking my escape key one time. I'm in select mode here, so I'll go ahead and right click on this and click rotate. Now I can rotate this room around to the direction that I would like it to be in, and I click down one time. That freezes the position of my room. Now I left click and hold my left mouse button down and drag that over to where I want it to go. And there I have it. I've just placed my common condition room one time. Now I'm still in select mode. So if I had multiple rooms that were the same configuration, all I have to do is click replicate and come over here and touch down wherever I want that to go. And there we go, I'm all set with that. Now, there's another thing I can do with common conditions that are not part of the replicate mode. Let's show you what that is. Tell you what though, before, yeah, no, I'll show you now. I'll hit this. And I'll roll down just a little bit here. And we'll say that this particular wall, this green wall, also occurs here on my job. Now that will get added in to my project but it is not part of these common rooms, so that if I replicate a room, this doesn't go with it. Let's see what this looks like back on the other screen. When I come back here, I'm on my pages view. So the conditions that are both part of that common condition and that wall that I measured around the elevators, the totals of these conditions appear here. However, if I come back here and flip to my common conditions view, here I see the quantities for just that one room. All right, now I'm going to flip back to my pages view and come back out here. And now we can look at another way to create a 
common condition by cropping. To do this, I'll zoom in a little bit here and I'll take this K02 room and I'll use the same conditions that I used in my original common condition. I don't have to, I could use different conditions if I want. But in this case, I'll go ahead and use the same ones and measure this room up. Well, there we go. Now, at the moment, <clears throat> this room, and really even after I create the common condition, this particular room will not be added into that count. This condition, all the conditions that are associated with this, are just like these green lines for the partition that I did over here. They're just sort of like add-ons to this page but not part of the replicated common condition. But I can take a piece of what I've just done and create a common condition for that. To do that, I come up here and I click on conditions again. Watch the menu change when I do that. The menu changes. I get this up here, but I also get this that says crop common conditions. When I click this, I can now define an area of my drawing that I would like to count as a common condition. And then I can label it the way I want. Notice the color of this common condition room is different than what I had, well, give it the right name than I had in the other one. I can click this and I can change it to a different color if I want. And that will be helpful because all of the conditions associated with this particular common condition will have that symbol next to them. And I hit save. Now what just happened on my other screen is this. The edge showed me the area of the drawing that I cropped. There we go. Now I'm on the pages view. Let's take a look at the common conditions view and see what that likes looks like on the common conditions tree. I have to flip back and forth a little bit here because I'm using one screen. So I have my common condition here and I have my common condition here. When I click on any one of these, I see which common condition it is. If I expand this common condition, I see what conditions are part of it. And I see what pages are part of it. This one doesn't have any pages associated with it yet. This one on the other hand has a page and the title of the page that it's associated with. Now I'm going to flip back to my pages tree. And I'm going to use that common condition that I created. Once again, to do that, I come up here and I click on conditions, which changes the toolbar as well as what I have up here to work with. I now hit the drop down and I select my K02 room. And now I've got that K02 hanging on my cursor, similar to what I had on that K01. There we go. Now I wanna go ahead and get rid of this one. So I'll go ahead and just hit the escape key on that. So I've made three copies of that original. This original is really just part of that 
original page similar to what these green lines over here are. But these three other ones that were replicated are common conditions that will change accordingly. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, watch what happens if I come back here to my common condition and I flip this thing back to the view where I'm looking just at my common condition. I'll go ahead and add a wall right in here. And then I'll flip back to the pages tree. What you'll notice here is all three of these replicated rooms have that line in them. The first one doesn't because that is really part of the other portion like this green one here. But these three that I copied all have that in there. Now that's for adding things. I can delete conditions or delete parts of a condition the same way and it will be distributed through all of those. I can also do something else along this line. I can come in here, select this particular wall and change the properties in here. In this case, I'll just change the length of it. And when I do that, this condition, I can highlight it easier that way, that condition is being changed in all of those places. This condition is not being changed. This one still remains with my other one because that's part of a different common condition. But this one and all of these have that new information in it. So this is similar to the condition schedule feature that we have in the program where you can make changes in one place and have it apply throughout the entire section. Well, in conclusion, there's a few things that we need to keep in mind regarding common conditions. Remember that common conditions can only be used within the section that it is in. If you need the same common conditions in another section, you need to copy and paste them to that section like you would any other page. The common conditions page itself does not add any price or quantity to the job until the conditions are used on a standard page or counted using the replicate feature we previously discussed. If you create common conditions by cropping, the rotate and flip features work nicely. If you create it from a different page, the flip features will flip in relation to where the conditions were on that page. We still have some tweaking needed to improve this. You can use the common condition for other portions of the plan where repeating is not necessary. So that wraps it up for today. So it's back to you, Tammy. Thank you so much, Joe. Um, now, everybody, we're going to open up for Q&A, and I'm going to pass it over to Ryan Bogart, who many of you guys know, and he's our Director of Product and Customer Success. Ryan? All right. Thanks, Tammy, and thank you, Joe. Uh, that was that was an excellent job. Um, uh, so far, it looks like you've done such a good job, we don't have any questions. Um, uh, I'm gonna, I have a few things here. To, um, to cover and uh, go ahead and, and ask your questions uh, while I'm talking here if you have something that you want to find out about common conditions. Um, so really just wanted to kind of end today, first of all, by saying thank you to everybody for joining us um, and thanks in advance for, for providing us with your feedback uh, about our webinars. We do enjoy hearing the feedback and it helps us to um, know that we should continue doing the webinars and obviously uh, come up with some additional content that uh, you all want to see. Uh, lastly, uh, as I'm 
certain that all of you have been doing. We, along with the rest of the world, have been closely monitoring the evolving situation with, with COVID-19. Um, on Monday, for the safety and well-being of our employees, families, and customers, we did make the decision to modify our day-to-day -day businesses. Uh, all of our employees are currently working from their homes, practicing the suggested uh, social distancing efforts. Uh, definitely be assured that this will not in any way affect the level of support that we'll be able to provide to our customers. We're still operating with normal business hours uh, and technical support hours as well, which are Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, in addition, we will not be holding any hands-on training events for the next uh, few weeks, but we do have great options available for virtual training. If you already have training scheduled with us, we will be switching this over to the virtual training option. Uh, if you haven't already, you will be hearing from our staff soon with information about this option. We certainly understand the importance of business productivity, and we're fully committed to continuing to provide excellent customer support as we all navigate through this unprecedented time together. But everybody stay safe out there. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us for any help that you might need. Um, <clears throat> I think that was uh, it. Doesn't look like we had any uh, questions come in for um, specifically for the common conditions. Um, so with that, have a great day, everybody. Thanks for joining.